Okay, so here we're going to look at the, some of the details behind aseptic technique. And what this basically is, is keeping things clean and to the point of being sterile in conditions that require this to prevent contamination. So aseptic techniques are precautionary measures taken to prevent contamination of pure cultures and sterile laboratory equipment. Treat all organisms as potential pathogens. Even if that may not be the case, what does this technique involve? It's kind of this isolation of things that's occurring, uh, preventing contamination, allowing only um, the natural bacteria in that area or that pathogen you might be working with, preventing it from getting from escaping and limiting uh, cross transfer of unwanted uh, microorganisms. The general goal, the proper procedure, will limit the chance of that cross-contamination. You see kind of here, touching a dirty surface and going somewhere else. While the concept is simple, accomplishing it can be a challenge as all portions of the process must be adhered to. You can't be sterile for a little portion and then go on and then not be sterile and be sterile again because you'll ruin uh, the entire protocol there. This could also be important, for example, uh, with food items to prevent contamination when processing food and during the cooking process. I want to start sterile, so in the lab, this may involve purchasing previously sterilized products that come in sealed containers here. You might be familiar with those at the dentist office, for example, or you'll have to sterilize what um, you're going to use. So there's techniques, um, UV light is one example, there can be sterilizing fluids that can be used. Um, so you want to start sterile with whatever tools you're using, whether you purchase them sterile or you sterilize them yourself. You want to have a clean working area. Uh, so keeping the area clean before, during, and after an experiment are key concepts to keep in mind. This will help eliminate the chance for contamination. Um, this goes to equipment that you might be using for multiple experiments, uh, probes that might be um, used for different areas. You want to make sure everything starts clean, uh, you keep it as clean during the experiment, and you also clean it afterwards. Wash hands and use gloves. So just because you're using gloves doesn't mean you don't have to wash your hands. Hands should be washed before, then you put the gloves on. Remember to wash your hands after as well. Even though these ideally will be creating a barrier between whatever you're working with, it's good practice to wash before, put the gloves on, work with them, and then wash after in case anything was to breach um, the, the gloves here. Have materials on hand, so read over the protocol ahead of time and be sure all necessary items are in hand are in places that are easy access. This may involve you're taking chemicals, putting them on a tray, uh, this may be keeping things in close quarters to the equipment you'll be using. Uh, read that protocol fully over and then have everything you need on hand. Keep it in close, easy access. This will prevent you from having to travel long distances, which will just help increase the odds of or chance of contamination occurring. You want to work efficiently, so the the longer it takes you to make transitions, the greater chance for contamination. Here we see we're in a sterile hood. Everything is close. Everything's efficient. The plates are here. Um, all the tubes are here. Uh, we got a flame. Everything is very close quarters, easy to find, easy to get to. And through proper lab technique, you should be able to work through this efficiently. Uh, if you're working with petri dishes, so keep the dishes closed, and when you need to access the media, tilt the lid just enough to gain access. You don't want to say remove the lid and go through here, as this image would show. You want to just lift it enough, just so you can get in there, transfer what you need to, and then close it back again. Don't lift that lid completely off, even though it may look like good for the, this picture. Um, it's not a true sterile technique. Even if you're in a hood, this can still cause a chance for contamination to occur. You want to limit that as much as possible. Here we see we're working close to a flame. We're just lifting it as much as needed for the duration that's needed for that transfer. Close it, stack it, and move on. This is all good ways uh, to keep everything sterile and clean, which is important when you're looking for um, a high level of detail in your experiments.